Good morning, everyone, and welcome to ICA's online service. I'm Pastor JV, and we are really glad to have you join us today. Hope you've had time to uh, get your coffee made and find your favorite chair before we start. Uh, but before we dive in, we have a few announcements of things going on that we think you might want to know. We have ICA Children's Church material available for your kids. You can download it at bit.ly ICA Kids Online. We hope you and your child can have a great experience and encounter God together. Follow ICA Kids on Instagram to get the latest updates from ICA Kids. ICA's prayer service is going stronger on Zoom every Tuesday at 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. You can check our Instagram on Tuesday to get the meeting ID and let us be strengthened by praying together. We provide a new way for you to donate online to the ministry at ICA. You can scan the QR code on the screen or visit icasby.com giving for more information. Have you followed ICA on our social media or subscribed to ICA's YouTube channel? We've provided devotions, recipes, and more interesting content and updates to accompany you during the quarantine. Because physical distancing is not spiritual distancing. We're starting a new Bible reading plan to keep you focused until the end of the year. You can find the link on our slide or scan the QR code to get started. Follow us on social media to get more information. All right, that's it for announcements. Worship is about to start, so let's get ready to join in from home and worship God together. this morning because the goal is just one thing is that worship the same God so let's worship with us this morning come on Yours. One more. 
your friend I am accepted I know who I am I am secure I'm confident That I am loved I know who I am
Your grace compels my soul to love and draw in close. I lift my hands and sing. Surrender everything In you I know I'm found My God to you I bow Now until forever Jesus I surrender Show me what I don't presence longing to be with you lead me to a new place more of you through the fire I'll persevere I won't submit to anything where I'll go Thank you. 
Lord, we come before you and we surrender to you. Uh, we are so desperate for your presence. We want to be led by you. We long to be with you. We want more and more of your presence in our lives. Um, help us to persevere. Help us to go through the fire as we pray, as we seek your face. Um, we know that we need to trust in you and that you alone have the answers. You alone have the way out. So Lord, help us today as we uh, come to hear your word, as after we worship you, we want to hear from your word. We're continuing worshiping you, um, but we learn together from King Jehoshaphat today. And Lord, I pray for all of us who are going through with a lot of things in our relationships right now in this pandemic season, in our businesses, in our families, and just countless of things, issues with our health as well, Lord. There's a lot of prayer requests coming through, and we just ask you today, we need you more and more than ever. Uh, we are so desperate for you. So God, show us your love, open our eyes, and as we wait for you to see a glimpse of you, oh God, we will continue to wait for you. It is in Jesus' name that we surrender the remaining of our time this morning to your loving hands, amen. All right, good morning, everybody. If you're watching this uh, during the morning time or good afternoon, it's in the afternoon. I know some of you don't like to watch in the mornings as well. I get it. It's pandemic season. My name is Pastor Ardo. I'm one of the pastors here in ICA. And we are back at another sermon on the sermon series, League of Kings. Today is part three. So I'm really excited to talk about uh, King Jehoshaphat today. You may, not, you may or may not know him, uh, but he's, he's a really good king. We're going to look at a lot of stuff. And today particularly is how this king prays. Um, and so I, I titled today's message as King Jehoshaphat, a king's prayer service. Yes, like prayer service, the prayer service that we have every Tuesday. Um, this is a king's version of a prayer service. And it's much more than that. I almost titled this as prayer revival. Uh, but I think prayer services, we could relate a lot more. So you're probably asking, wait, prayer service? Could the events in Second Chronicles uh, chapter 20 be the first kingly prayer service in the whole Bible? Uh, write in the comments. I know if you're watching this on Facebook or on YouTube, you can write in the comments while you're there. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and hit that notification bell. I sound like a YouTuber. Uh, but, but I do encourage you, if you have not subscribed, please do so. It will help to uh, tell people about, about Jesus through ICA. Uh, so if you haven't done that already, please do that today. I just want to give a shout out, first of all, to the unofficial ICA prayer team. Uh, you guys know who you are. Uh, you're just blowing up your messages. Every time I open my WhatsApp, I always, I know that I can count on you guys on praying for other people. Uh, and I just want to say thank you. Everybody in that prayer group, um, you know who you are. For your heart, 
passion and affection to see God move in people's lives. I sense that with every message you guys send. For your vocal and brave proclamations, I am just so encouraged every time I hear about your, your, your just being vocal about God's goodness and his power in that group. So I just want to say thank you for that. Uh, but also thank you for celebrating with them uh, when God answers prayers. And thank you also for mourning with them when God says, not yet, or he says, no, I have other plans. And so I just want to give a shout out to you. I see your prayer team. You can give a thumbs up uh, uh, below, uh, you know, just give an emoji and let, 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 let them know that they're appreciated and they're interceding on your behalf. And trust me, they are crazy intercessors. They just love God. They love you so much. I want to give a shout out to the prayer service as well. Shameless plug to prayer service every Tuesday. If you guys have enjoyed it, whoo. Um, thank you, Pastor Afma, also for establishing that, this, this culture of prayer service, for establishing the most powerful, to me, 60 minutes of worship, teaching, and intercession, for being a virtual and live service uh, that is the closest thing to a real physical service right now. We're in ICA East and, and, and Galaxy Mall, uh, Game Tiga, and... I'm here physically without you guys you know, on the screens, but, but Tuesday, Tuesday prayer service is always like the closest thing to me to a real life service. And thank you prayer service for uniting all of God's people in one heart in agreement to the will of our Father. Why I talk about all these prayers because we're gonna talk about the prayer of King Jehoshaphat. So before we dissect the prayer of King Jehoshaphat and how he prayed and, and we're gonna like figure out you know, those, those nuanced details, and, and uh, hopefully it's not going to get too long. Um, let's read how Jehoshaphat is first introduced in Second Chronicles chapter 17, um, verse 3 till 6. Here's the, uh, the word of the Lord. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he followed the example of his father's early years and did not worship the images of Baal. He sought after his father's, uh, father's God and obeyed his commands instead of following the evil practices of the kingdom of Israel. So the Lord established Jehoshaphat's control over the kingdom of Judah. All the people of Judah brought gifts to Jehoshaphat, so he became very wealthy and highly esteemed. He was deeply committed to the ways of the Lord. He removed the pagan shrines and the Asherah poles from Judah. That was basically the executive summary of King Jehoshaphat. That's what we're talking about him. He's part of the League of Kings. He is worthy for us to study and to figure out, you know, what is it about his life? that we could learn today. And the more I study about King Jehoshaphat, I realize is how he prayed in chapter 20. But I wanna first give you some sort of like resume or a TLDR version, too long didn't read version of King Jehoshaphat. He is the fourth king of Judah, sixth generation after King David. And he's a son of King Asa, which Pastor John talked about two weeks ago. He became king at the age of 35 and he reigned for 25 years. Um, particularly 873 to 848 BC. First Kings 22 and Second Kings give account to his reign, but the comprehensive details are found in Second Chronicles chapter 17 to 20. So if you want to go into deeper study on King Jehoshaphat, you may. He is regarded as one of the good kings of Judah that gives a preview of the coming messianic king. Now, if you, if you study the book of Chronicles, First and Second Chronicles, the theme is about this coming king. No matter how amazing the kings that we will learn, there is one coming king, a messianic king that is different from everyone else. And spoiler alert, his name is Jesus. Now, he's, uh, uh, King Jehoshaphat is one of the good kings, but in spite of that, he has questionable ending. So he started with an exclamation mark, but it ended with a question mark. So he started really well, you know, exclamation mark, you know, but at the end, it's kind of like a question mark because you're not sure like, did he finish well or not? And so you may have to do your own study with that. But um, so at the end, not all the pagan shrines were removed. The Bible says that it was not all removed. So either not all were removed or more pagan shrines keep on popping up. And so like he couldn't keep up with all the pagan shrines coming up or something. So we don't know but, uh, exactly. But for sure, the Bible says that not all the pagan shrines were removed. Uh, secondly, thus, God's people were never fully committed to God. And so because of the pagan shrines that was around, people could never really see and worship God uh, because of that. And he's not perfect because he, he, he had poor decision making uh, by, by making the wrong friends, particularly evil Israelite kings. Um, and 
Unfortunately, his son uh, Jehoram didn't follow his father's footsteps, a.k.a. he killed his brothers um, after his father died. So that's not exactly a good, you know, um, inheritance or a good like follow up to a great king like Jehoshaphat. And so people are questioning, is he even worth studying? But yes, because even in spite of all of this, the Lord was still with Jehoshaphat because he followed the good examples of his forefathers. Uh, it was in, in chapter 17 of Second Chronicles, either his own father, King Asa uh, or King David or both. So some translation says that he followed his father, King David, even though we don't know his father is King Asa. Um, he, he worshiped God so passionately that he did destroy the pagan shrines and Asherah poles. Now, albeit not everyone as we saw at the end, but there was a the beginning season that he just tore, tore down all those pagan shrines, all those idol worship, all these Asherah poles recorded in chapter 17. He consulted God before making any decisions. Chapter 18 of 2 Chronicles, um, he's just, he does not make any decisions without consulting God first. Next, he brought social and religious reform by appointing judges across Judah. So this guy is not just about, you know, being religious, but he's almost like a political leader. He, he was found among Judah being, being among the people, the Bible says, and that he appointed judges so that they're able to lead <clears throat> with the fear of the Lord and serving other people. This king is for real. And next, he wanted Judah and Israel, because we all know the separation of divided uh, monarchy between the northern Israelite and the southern Judah. He wanted them to be united so bad, okay, two occasions. He nearly died and was reprimanded by pro the prophet uh, uh, Micaiah when Jehoshaphat wanted to help king of, uh, the king of Israel at the time, Ahab, in attacking Syria. That's in chapter 22 of 2 Kings. And Secondly, he, he, there was another thing that happened. His trade business uh, flopped, so it went really bad. Again, reprimanded by another prophet, Eliezer, when Jehoshaphat wanted to build a fleet of trading ships with the King Ab's son. So, you know, he had a bad deal with the, with the father. Let's do it with the son. <laughs> Still bad. Um, uh, Ahaziah, and he was reprimanded by two different um, prophets at the time. So... So he, but that's because he wanted the two kingdoms to be united. Now, this is the man we're going to read. This is the man we're going to read about his prayer in chapter 20 of Second Chronicles. Now, he was certainly not perfect, but his prayer can reveal so much for us today. So how did this prayer service, the first prayer service by a king, ever begin? It began because he had no choice. We're going to read uh, chapter 20, verse 1 and 2. After this, the armies, armies of the Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Meunites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Not a good day to start the day. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. They are already at Hazazon Tamar. This was another name for En Gedi. So three powerful nations declared war on Judah, and they are on their way as they are speaking as they're talking, as King Jehoshaphat is listening to this. By the way, they're already in Hazazan Tamar. If you do a little study on Hazazan Tamar or, or En Gedi, it is about 30 miles or 48 kilometers away from Jerusalem where King Jehoshaphat was. And by the way, I did a little Google search. You know, that distance is, is, is like from Surabaya to Mojokurto. So if you've been to Mojokurto, a little south of Mojokurto to Surabaya, that's the distance of En Gedi to Jerusalem, and that is not far. So basically, the beginning of the first prayer service that King Jehoshaphat is, is holding, he, he didn't plan it. It was not on the calendar. It was not like announced on Instagram. It was not like everybody knew it was coming. He just found out that day, we need to pray. That's how he began. It was urgent. They had no choice. We had to pray. So this is where we're going to look at verse 3 and onwards. And as we look upon the prayer of Jehoshaphat, I hope that you and I could learn more about the heart of this king, about the heart of somebody who fears God, about the heart who listens to God, who wants to, be consult, uh, who wants to uh, consult God first before doing anything. What kind of prayer? How can we pray today? So I hope, I hope and pray that we could learn how to pray as Joseph had prayed. So let's go to first, uh, verse 3 and 4 
as we look and dissect how Jehoshaphat prayed. Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged for the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. Man, what a picture of the beginning of this prayer service. And the first thing I want to, I want to dissect together is when you pray, like Jehoshaphat, when you pray, involve others to pray with you. That's right. When you pray, involve others. Don't just be the only one praying. Don't just be the one that you have to bear all the burdens. Now, now when, when you pray, I know it's, it's a business between you and God. And yes, you do need to pray privately. You need to pray, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, on your devotions and you have time in private. But there's power. There's assurance. There is hope. When you begin to tell people, hey, would you pray with me? Would you pray for me? Would you come and just let me know that this thing that I'm praying for, my business, my family, that I know that you're praying with me. And so to know the first thing that Jehoshaphat did, he's a king and he feels like I could just do it. I, you know, he could feel like I, I got it. I'm the king. You need to, you know, you need to learn from me. But instead he says, no, everybody, let's all come together and pray. Let me ask you this question. Do you pray alone or do you ask others to pray with you? Could this be the season that you begin to understand that praying is not just a business between you and God, and it is, but it is also important that you let your friends, your family, those that you trust in the Lord, that there are needs that you have or there are needs of others that you're interceding and that you want them to pray with you. And yes, it takes a humble heart to admit the need of others to pray for you or with you. So I just want to quickly point out that King Jehoshaphat's heart was not about exclusivity or like, no, I don't, I don't need you to get involved. I got this. I'm king. When I pray, the Lord hears me. But no, he says, guys, let's pray together. He involved other people. Have you involved other people in the needs that you have for your family? Or have you involved other people in the needs of, that other people have that you could tell other people, come on, let's pray for this family. Come on, let's pray for their business. Come on, we got to rally together. Jehoshaphat did, and this is proof of it. Let's keep going in the story at verse 6. He prayed. Now, here we go. We're going to see like more of the, the content of his prayer. He prayed, O Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. Oh, man, this is awesome. And when I made this observation, the first thing I could think about is this. When you pray, acknowledge who he is. That's right. When you pray, you got to acknowledge. Now, I know that might seem like an obvious thing to do, but a lot of times when we pray, we don't think about who we're talking to, right? I mean, even before starting this recording um, with, with my two brothers here, Danny Anka and, and Nathan, you know, I was thinking about we're praying before this recording, and I'm asking like, okay, I'm talking to God. Do I really, do I really understand who I'm talking to? And when you acknowledge who He is, here's the power of acknowledging it. This is why you need to know how to acknowledge Him. Because when you acknowledge who He is, you also acknowledge who you're not. Let me say that again. Every time you acknowledge who he is, you're also telling God that you are not. Because everything he is, you are not. Because he alone is God in heaven, you're not. He is ruler of the kingdoms of the earth, and you are not. He is powerful, he is mighty. Guess who's not powerful and mighty? It's you, it's me. And so when you acknowledge Him, there's power in the prayer because now you're in this close relationship with this being, this Creator, this Father who is unlike anyone else. The Bible calls Him holy. And so when you acknowledge Him, you're also telling yourself and Him and everybody who hears that we are not because you are. And here's a tip that I observed from the ICA prayer team. Are you ready? I notice every time that the ICA prayer team is about to, do, like, to respond in prayer, I love it when they begin to declare the characters of God before they even say one thing about this person that they're praying for. I love it. They would talk about how Adonai El-Rohi is the Lord who sees. I love it when we talk about uh, healing. Someone would say Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. I love it when, when they need provision. They say, oh, Jehovah Jireh, 
please provide. Or when, when, when they, they need strength or victory during the battle, we say, oh, Jehovah Nisi, be our banner. Or they pray, Jehovah Shalom, be their peace, the Lord our peace. You see, knowing who your God is, knowing who He is when you speak to Him is powerful. And Jehoshaphat understood that. He understood that when he acknowledged who He is, he understood who He's not. And so, how's your prayer life today? Have you acknowledged who He is? Or are you just asking, check off, I want A, I want B, I want C, talk to you later, God bless you, God. <laughs> uh, you bless you, God. And you don't talk to Him until lunchtime. You don't talk to Him until dinner time. You don't talk to Him until it's time to sleep. But when you pray, you've got to acknowledge Him because King Jehoshaphat did. Let's keep going, let's keep dissecting. Verse seven and nine. Oh, our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people, Israel, arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said, whenever we are faced with any calamity such as war, plague, or famine, we can come and stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us, and you will rescue us. Man, the observation I can only get King George Fett, when you pray, when you and I pray, we should recall what he has done. I think that's just powerful. That's just powerful to remind ourselves that the God that we're talking to is a God that is already at work before we even speak to him. Recall what he has done. And that's what King Jehoshaphat did. When he talked to God, he understood the God I'm talking to. He has done many great things before. Before I even talk to him, before I even think about him, God was at work. So here's a practical question for you and I. When is the last time you count your blessing? I know it's COVID. I know it's pandemic. Look, I'm not here to say it's easy that you lost your family member. I'm not saying it's easy that you lost your job. I'm not saying it's easy that you lost 90% of your business market. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying, when is the last time you count your blessings? Because I always tell people this, and I, my wife, Sarah, we always talk about this. It could always be worse. And here's the truth. For everything that God has not done in your life, so do you, do you have your prayer list? Yeah, all 20 of them. God hasn't done all 20 of them. Now, for everything that God has not done, did you know that He has done more than we could ever deserve? For every 20 list that you have, He has done two 100,000 much more than what you ask for. I, I just joined a small group the other day and uh, the Go Group leader was talking about God was already at work, you know. It just It takes one little thing to make something in your body not, not working or functioning well for you to go to the hospital. We ask for this healing, but we forget about the other things that God has been doing this whole time. And so when you recall what He has done, when you count your blessings, you understand that God is faithful even to this point that He hasn't answered your prayer. But He's always active. He's always ongoing. He's always working for your behalf, especially those who are called according to His purposes. So if you can't recall today, I want you to pay attention to the testimonies and stories of how God does amazing things in other people's lives. You may think like, okay, Pastor Ardo, I want to count my blessing. It's kind of hard right now. Um, it's really difficult. I want to encourage you. Ask the stories of other people, see what God is doing in their lives, and be encouraged today. <coughs> Excuse me. But if you got something to recall about God, if you have something to recall, you have something to share, share them. Never underestimate your testimony to inspire, encourage others to believe and trust in Jesus. When you pray, recall what He has done, because He's done a lot of things way too many things before he's even responding to the prayer that he already knows. But you got to recall. And that's what Jehoshaphat did. He recalled who God, who God is, what he has done. Let's keep going to verse 10. And now you see what the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir are doing. You would not let your, our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt. So they went around them and did not destroy them. Now you see how they reward us? For they have come to throw us out of your land, which you give us as an inheritance. Our God, oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. This may seem obvious, but I got to point out the obvious. 
when you pray, when I pray, when we all pray, may we surrender to him. Now, I know that, that might seem like the most like unsmart thing, you know, to be ever heard. Yeah? But you, you'd be surprised how often when we pray, as much as we pray, we give away control very little. Isn't that strange? When we pray, we still want to keep control. It's, it's just a weird thing that we do. We're, we're, <laughs> uh, I do it, you do it. Um, and, 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 and Jehoshaphat understood this. And that's why he says, God, won't you stop them? I'm powerless. We are powerless. They're about to attack us. We don't know what to do, but we look to you because you know what to do. And so when you surrender, it also means relinquishing control. It means letting go of the outcome. Now, I got to be careful. I know some of you are very smart and you're thinking, okay, surrendering. So I'm just going to sit here and not do anything. Okay. Before you're being a passive aggressive with me in the comments, you know, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this, when you surrender, it doesn't mean that you're not doing anything. Or you should not do anything. In fact, a man of faith will go to the hospital. After you pray, let's go to the hospital. That doesn't mean that your faith is small. It means that you're smart and that you trust in God, okay? But, but surrendering doesn't mean that you don't do anything. Surrendering means that the outcome is not on you. Surrendering means let the outcome be in God's hands, not in your hands. I will prepare. I will plan. I will do my best. But the outcome is not on me. It's not on you. It's on my good, good father who sees me who provides for me, who heals me, who is my banner, who is my peace. So when you surrender to him, you have to learn to let go. Many of us, we pray, but we don't let go. We pray, but we hold on to it. Lord, I give it to you. Amen. You take it back. We do that all the time. But Jehoshaphat did not do that. When he prayed, he surrendered. He says, Lord, I look to you for help. We don't know what to do. We, our armies can't do it. My business can't do it. My marriage, my marriage can't do it. My kids are, 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 are in trouble. We don't know what to do, but we look to you today. So when we are powerless and we don't know what to do, there is one who's in control and he wants to help you. Thanks to King Jehoshaphat, we could learn a little bit more about that today. Now this passage is a little, too, a little long. I'm going to read from verse 13 to verse 17 for our next observation. As all the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives and children, right? The spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Jahaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaiah, son of Jael, son of Mataniah, a Levite who was a descendant of Asaph. He said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeruel. But you will not even need to fight. Take your positions. Stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. <laughs> this is, you know, it, 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 you cannot, I cannot tell you how many times you cannot overread, you cannot read the Bible too much. It was only on my study of Jehoshaphat that I realized the one speaking was not Jehoshaphat at all. It was somebody else. And so here's a practical tip that we can have today. When we pray, when you pray today, listen to his voice that matches his word. Now, I got to be, I got to be clear with that because you can listen to a lot of voice, right? You can hear your voice. You can hear your parents' voice. You can hear the news voice. <clears throat> you can hear your YouTube voice. You can hear your Instagram voice. There's a lot of voice, but you need to listen to his voice. How do you know is his voice? It is matched with the Bible, the word of God. Now, if God can speak through a donkey, yes, your Bible has a speaking donkey before Shrek. To see the story of Balaam in Numbers 22. Nathan is just cracking up right now. Uh, then, God, then God can speak through others in your life. If God can speak through a donkey, it is limitless on how God can speak to us. And so here's what I'm trying to say. God is speaking to us all the time. I learned this from my wife when I first dated her. Uh, I, I remember telling her as, as we were trying to seek God for our marriage, should we get married or not? Oh no, you know, and, 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 and you know, 
And I, I'm, I'm telling Sarah, Sarah, I don't know what's God, I'm not, I, don't, I feel like God is not speaking to me. And Sarah just looked me dead in the eye. You know, this is girlfriend Sarah, not even Sarah, wife Sarah. This is girlfriend Sarah. <laughs> she looks at me in the eyes and goes, Ardo, God never stops speaking. You have stopped listening. Never forget that. I went down on my knees and I, no, okay, but, but she's right. He is always speaking. And so at this particular moment, it happens that the Spirit of the Lord came upon a person to speak the truth of God, not even through King Jehoshaphat, but through the church, through God's people. So if God can speak through other people, match it with His Word, and you know for absolute sure that this is the Lord's voice. Notice in the story, Jehoshaphat did not say, whoa, 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 hey, hold up, be quiet, don't talk, I'm king. He did not say that. But when he heard the voice of God, through Jahaziel, who's a, a, a person that happens to be a descendant of Levi, he knew that this is the Lord's voice because he says, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, trust in the Lord, the Lord is with, the Lord is with you. That is the voice of the Spirit of the Lord. So when you pray, ask yourself this, am I listening? to the voice of God or am I too busy talking that I'm no longer listening to his voice? When you pray, we talk about it all the time, right? Praying is a two-way communication. Yeah, right, that's not really true. When you're praying, you're like focusing on like telling God, God, you gotta do this, God, you gotta do that. But have you ever prayed and let God speak to you? That is a spiritual exercise that you and I need to develop because Joseph had understood that. So have an open heart, have an open mind, but hide his word in your heart. Psalm 119 says, I have hidden your heart and I have hidden your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you, O Lord. You see, how do you know? How do you match his word? You got to know his word. You got to read it. You got to study it. And then when you listen to someone's voice, whether it be yours, someone else's, your, your spouse, your friend, your pastor, whoever it is, whoever's preaching, then you know the Lord is talking to you because it is matched with the word of God. When you pray, listen to his voice. Let's continue verse 18. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground. This is good. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. This is awesome. You know, that's why I'm so glad Pastor John in September asked all of us to pray together uh, during a refocus because it is this form of bowing down to the ground and, and worshiping the Lord together. When you and I pray, may we humbly worship before him. When you and I pray, may we just bow down and worship before Him. And I know that seems like, okay, lofty. What does that mean? It really means this. When you're humbling yourself, it means I'm repenting. I'm repenting for my sin before God. I'm repenting my sin before this transgression that I have with my friend, this, this thing, this riff that I have with my brother. I am just wanting to get back to you, to the Lord, to others. I'm humbling myself. I bow down and I say, God, you are the only one that could do it. If you're, and here's, here's what's crazy about this. And I, notice in the story, no one bowed down until King Jehoshaphat bowed down. So in other words, if you're not the first to do it in your family, if you're not the first to do it in your church, if you're not the first to do it in your small group, if you're not the first to do it in your workplace, then don't expect others to do the same. You can't do that. Because if you learn anything from King Jehoshaphat, it's that he went first. He bowed down first. He humbly come before God first, and then others follow. But Pastor Ardo, I'm not a king. Okay, I know most of us are not kings. I'm not a king. <laughs> Just tell, tell our wives that and say who's really king, you know. Um, but, that, that's the, but the point is, when we bow down, when we go first, it, it, it brings power. There's power in going first because they see their father, they see their mother, they see their friend, they see somebody that they trust and that they see that they're trying to follow God, they're bowing down, they're lowering themselves, they're humbling themselves, they're repenting. Man, I should do the same. Christian, when you pray, never stop humbling yourself in worship before, for him, before God because that is exactly what King Jehoshaphat did. Verse 20. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out in the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me. All you people of Judah and Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets and you will succeed. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. 
His faithful love endures forever. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. The army of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. As they destroyed the army of Seir, they began to attack attacking each other. For when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were the dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of them of the enemy had escaped. What? Who would have thought this is how the story would have ended? Nobody knew this. King Jehoshaphat didn't know this. Nobody knew how God was about to bring his will, his protection, his victory, uh, and his battles for him. So here's a takeaway for us when you pray, when I pray, when we all pray. When you pray, give thanks to the Lord, watch this, before the victory, not just after the victory. This is powerful. This is powerful because King Jehoshaphat understood that before we obtain the promises, the blessing, the breakthrough, the thing that God has promised to give us before, before we are His children called according to His purposes, He gave thanks to the Lord before He even saw a glimpse of victory. That is the heart of King Jehoshaphat. And can you imagine if we all as God's people begin to give thanks before we see the victory? What would that do to your family? What would that do to your workplace? It would just be a revolution. It would just be an outpouring revival happening in your house right now. You see, it doesn't take a spiritual giant to praise him after a good thing has happened, right? Isn't that so easy? Oh, praise the Lord, God is so good because he provided. You, didn't, you weren't praising before. You weren't giving thanks before. You see, and you give the testimony after the breakthrough, but the most inspiring, the most convincing testimony is not when things are going good, but when you still have peace in the middle of the storm of uncertainty. And, and that is what King Joshua, see, King Joshua was promised this, right? Yesterday. And the morning that he came to battle, say, knowing that there's a promise that he doesn't have to fight the battles, that the Lord will fight their battles, he didn't know how it was going to go down. He still had to go up to the armies of the enemies and he had to march up to them and say, my God is good. We're going to praise him. We're going to give thanks to him. We're going to say his love endures forever and he is good. We must give thanks to him. And look at verse 22. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise. Man, I'm, I'm, sound, I'm feeling Pentecostal today. The very moment he gave thanks and give praise, the Lord caused the armies to, to attack each other. I'm telling you, what moment of praising do you have to wait? Do you have to wait till after COVID to give thanks? Do you have to wait till your business is back to normal? Do you have to wait till your marriage is completely healed? Do you have to wait till your kids actually want to talk to you? Do you have to wait until everything goes back to perfect? Then you give thanks? You obviously have not heard King Jehoshaphat because if you've learned about him, he understood that giving thanks is something not before or after the victory. It is all the time. You give thanks all the time. And when you begin to give thanks all the time, you begin to see things move in your heart and in your lives. We're going to end with verse 25 and 28. King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. <laughs> victory is theirs. They found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, and other valuables, more than they could carry. There was so much plunder that it took them three days just to collect it all. On the fourth day, they gathered in the Valley of Blessing, which got its name that day because the people praised and thanked the Lord there. It is still called the Valley of Blessing today. Then all the men returned to Jerusalem with Joshua, leading them overjoyed that the Lord had given them victory over their enemies. They marched into Jerusalem to the music of harps, lyres, and trumpets, and they proceeded to the temple of the Lord. A powerful prayer service turned into a powerful testimony of God's faithfulness and power. There's so much to remember, and I don't blame you for like not remembering any of it. So I encourage you to join a small group this week, uh, this week so you could uh, read more about 2 Chronicles chapter 20. But here's a quick recap before we finish. Here's a quick recap. Number one, do you need to involve other people in your prayer life? 
Do you need to maybe join prayer services Tuesday? Hint, hint. Maybe do you need to talk to your best friend and like just be honest on like, bro, sister, can you just like pray for my marriage because it's not going well? Is it time for you to involve someone else? Is it time for you to, to email to, to, to the, prayer, uh, the prayer request uh, at, at, at ICSBR.com that, that you need help? Is it time for you to just humble yourself and say, guys, would you just come and pray? Because, because King Jehoshaphat humbled himself to involve other people. Is it time for you to involve other people? Number two, do you know who you're speaking to when you pray? Do you know that he is God? He's God in heaven. He's ruler. He's mighty in power and there's no one like him. Do you know that? Do you know that he's already blessed you with so many good things before you ask him for other things? Did you know that? Did you know that the fact that you have breath in your lungs, that you are alive today, is because he loves you? What's the point of praying to him if you don't surrender to him and take control again, right? Don't you hate that? You say amen and then you take it right back. Um, should you do more listening when you pray? Or are you the kind of person that just prays and prays and prays and you're not even like listening to what God is speaking to you about? And when you worship him, is there a shrine of pride in your heart? Is there a God, is there a God called self-centeredness in your heart? Is there an idol called love of money in your heart? When you worship him, are there any of these pagan shrines and Asherah poles in your heart that you need to take down? Is thankfulness part of your prayer life? Or is that a condition after God answers my prayers? God, I'll give thanks to you after you do this, this, this. These are questions that you know the answers to. So if we pray like Jehoshaphat, what, are, what would our marriage be like? What would our relationships be like? What would our workplace be like? What would our schools be like? What would our church be like if we all began to pray like Jehoshaphat? So before we end, I'm going to read this verse, which is basically the end of the, almost uh, the end of the chapter. When all the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them. So Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. We're going to end with this thought. That relationship with Jesus brings peace and trust. Hallelujah. It's true. And if you don't have a relationship with Him today, this peace and rest is available for everyone and anyone, including yourself. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, this promise is given to you. Make a decision to follow Jesus today and let Him give you His peace and His rest. Go to bit.ly slash life to be in touch with us and we'll talk to you more about how to start this new life in Christ Jesus. And we're going to read Matthew 11, verse 28 and 30 before we pray. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. This is what Jesus says. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and the burden I give you is light. Life of faith in Jesus is easy to bear in light because He has taken away the greatest burden of your life. You know what that is? That's sin. He's taken it away. Believe in Him and let Him teach you today and let Him take away all of your burdens of sin, guilt, shame, and past mistakes. Once again, go to bit.ly slash I see in your life today so we can celebrate with you in the decisions you've made today. King Jehoshaphat was not perfect. He's far from perfect because a messianic king has come already and that's Jesus. And yet we, he followed God with all of his heart, but there is one who is perfect because he and the Father are one. And he wants to give you and me that peace and that rest for our souls. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this time that we have to tune in, to worship you with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and for learning and studying about this King that we have no idea of from the Old Testament as recorded in the scriptures, King Jehoshaphat, and how he prayed, and the content, and, and how he just looked to you, and how he communicated to you. God, I pray today that we will begin to immerse ourselves in a new light in how we pray to you and how we talk to you. Lord, as we are listening to your voice, 
May we study your word even greater, even more diligent, God, so that we can finish strong. We could finish our race because we are running with you toward the everlasting crown that you have in store for us. Lord, I pray for those who are starting their relationship with you starting today. God, as they trust their lives to you, may you give them peace, may you give them rest, but not just to those who are starting a new relationship with you, but to all those who are surrendering themselves to you in their jobs, in their health, for their families, and for their relationships. God, today we look to you because we are powerless, but you are powerful, you are in control, so we seek to you for help. Be there for us, just as you were there for King Jehoshaphat. And may your name be glorified because we give thanks to you, O Lord, before we tune in and after we tune in to this program online. Thank you, God. We just thank you. We worship you always. In Jesus' name, we only pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Make sure you like, click, subscribe, and uh, share this video to your friends and family. Tune in next week for another edition of League of Kings. God bless you. Set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. church we need your power in us and we seek your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst we refuse to waste our lives for you are our joy and prize to see the captive hearts released the hurt the sick the poor
Let the darkness clear Show your mighty hand Heal our streets and land